Hiya, welcome to Thoughts on Tuesday. So, I'm still in chapter one of Inner Brilliance, Out to Shine. And this week's topic is around workaholism and imposter syndrome. So, I am writing this book for clients that suffer with those two conditions. And they're kind of inextricably linked in that because there's imposter syndrome going on, this then leads to the person overworking. So what do I mean by imposter syndrome? So have you ever been somewhere? So it could have been an event, it could have been working for a business, it could have been a particular client where you're waiting for that tap on the shoulder for someone to say, oi, you don't belong here, you've been found out and that you've only got to your position in life through luck, not through talent, or any of the things that you've done well at. So the term imposter syndrome was coined back in the 70s and it was thought initially that imposter syndrome just affected women but actually it affects, they found with future studies, both men and women equally. So take for example some of the clients I work with, the majority of them, they're all already amazingly successful and one of the things I will say to them is, when is enough enough? It's almost like they're in this pursuit of enoughness. At some level, they don't seem to recognise the value they add to their organisations. Now, one of the counters to imposter syndrome is, so what I will get my clients to do is to get them to acknowledge their successes, their achievements, their gifts, their talents, all the things that make them uniquely them. And I get under the surface this of this in more detail in chapter two. So the challenge with imposter syndrome and um, not being enough, so this pursuit of enoughness, is that it causes my clients to overwork and then they get stressed, they get burnt out, um, and the, the, it almost, it's almost like the joy of working life is sucked out of them. What we're heading towards, or the ultimate in this book, is that we're heading towards people being able to basically tap into what makes them amazing, but also reaccess the joy of work life. Because we, we work a long time, don't we? So we might as well be happy doing what we're doing. Now, if you're thinking a workaholic is just somebody that works hard there is a difference one of the real kind of acid tests is so take for example if you struggle to transition from work to holiday so take for example i've been away this weekend at my lovely sister's wedding whoop, whoop. and um, in the olden days i would have been preoccupied by things that were going on at work but in actual fact completely switched off and was just kind of in the moment engaged with the social activities at the weekend and if we fail to do that so if we can't switch off if we've got a compulsion to be working all the time the challenge with that is that we don't rest and recharge do we and we then get into this downward spiral of basically not enjoying either work because we're working too hard but then work starts to encroach on life itself because we're obsessing or we've got this compulsion to be working um, during our downtime as well. So my question to you, well, I've got two questions to reflect on. So one, raise awareness of whether you feel a compulsion to work because that might be an indication that you've got workaholism going on. And, and again, one of the reasons that people can keep themselves busy is that so overworking suppresses what a person is feeling at a deeper level. And again, as part of the book, I'm going to be showing you how to get rid of those things that cause you to overwork. The second question is, when is enough enough? And to allow yourself to start to notice all of your achievements, what you do well, what your gifts, what your talents are, and, and to own them really, because they're yours, aren't they? You are uniquely you. Anyway, hope that's been useful and see you next week. Bye.